listeners, as quickly as HR moved workers to the safety of remote work during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, it's already time to pivot and put plans in place to reopen the office. Where does HR begin? What safety measures do organizations have to take into consideration? What policies will make a difference in employee confidence and engagement? And how has the world of work changed indefinitely? Here with me today is Maylon Nguyen, SVP of HR for North America for Schneider Electric, to answer some of these pressing questions. Maylon, thanks for joining me today. How are HR policies changing as we move into the new normal? Well, human resources has played an essential role in supporting the business during the crisis. And at Schneider, our current HR policies were already well advanced as far as flexibility is concerned and remote ways of working. The COVID-19 crisis, though, has led us to reinforce those policies. And we've always been a company that operates with the understanding that what defines family, life, and work for our people is changing every single day. So we've been brainstorming new ways to embrace those change and be more inclusive pre-COVID, but certainly during the crisis and currently, I would say, very intensely. Since the onset on the transition of remote work, we have communicated to managers that they have to be flexible with their people who are maybe parents and they can have the ability to work from different remote locations from their home. Uh, work at very non-traditional business hours to tend to any personal responsibility that they have to do outside of their job. And we believe that this has made a great difference in the engagement of the people. Uh, We are also looking forward to um, keeping some of those policies or keeping promoting them very much. Moving into the return to work, we recognize that the, t- the challenge of remote working are real. One of the concrete examples that we've done is to really offer a part-time working arrangement on a voluntary basis to provide you know, choices to our people. And we've had very good results and, and adoption. Now, as a crisis moves forward and things are improving, states are opening, what are some safety measures and cultural initiatives NIDA Electric plans to have in place for employees as they return to work? It's been quite a lot of work and uh, very, you know, a lot of passionate people have been, you know, putting their brains into designing what would be our return to, to office return to office, we say that a lot in Schneider because we've not stopped working while we were in the crisis. And I think that's really about how we make sure the people who are who used to be working in office aren't going to be able to come back. So we are adopting best approaches and how to bring uh, our employee back to the office in a manner that is really focused first and foremost on their health and safety. So it's not just about returning to the office, but really make sure that we imagine what's the new future of the workplace and how are we going to put both short-term a measure to manage that, but also how do we understand how we work in that new normal and take into account state policies, but also, you know, uh, our own dis- protocols to cover a variety of scenarios that we have with our distributed workforce. Concretely, we plan on bringing a select group of employees back to the office as early as the beginning of June. So we're working on that, you know, really right now. And the people who are eligible to go back to work and to back to the office uh, will be doing so only if their role is critical to the business. Do they need to access a lab? Do they need to access warehouse to be able to perform their work? Uh, we also recognize that some people may want to go back to the office because they, they have situation at home that can make it uh, more and more difficult for them to work remotely. So we'll be assessing those cases on a case-by-case basis. So we will uh, limit site occupancy to 25% capacity in order to ensure proper social distancing. And we are empowering our site leaders to delay opening of their sites until they are 100% sure that all safety protocols are met. Other things that we've been taking into consideration in the return to office is, you know, how meeting rooms, client visits, internal events, and somehow, you know, everything about how physically our culture is going to be perceived. Our office and factory protocols will include enhanced cleaning procedures. We'll have temperature screening. We're providing welcome kits to the people with face masks 
hand sanitizer, cleaning wipes to employees when they will return. They also have to complete an e-learning before they can return to the office. And we'll be also managing you know, the flow, the traffic within space to make sure that it's only a one-way route. Uh, we'll be also closing for now the high-touch areas such as you know water fountains, wellness centers, if we have any break rooms. And we'll also close our conference rooms in uh, where, where we cannot have any social distancing, those space will be closed. No doubt that the office is going to be operating differently. But again, I think we've had very close communication with the leadership and our, our leaders across the country. And people, most importantly, feel very secure, safe, and comfortable to go back if they have to. Right, absolutely. I mean, within this time period, HR has certainly had to pivot quite frequently. And of course, there's going to be new challenges. What do you think that leaders are going to need to consider for the future after going through this? And you know, it's interesting, because I think the crisis has taught us to focus on what matters the most, right? What is the most critical thing you have to focus on? I've read an interesting article, and I think it resonated a lot with how I think, which is not so much has changed before or after the crisis, because the most important thing in any company or organization is your people. And I think, you know, you have to care for the people no matter what. You know, every 10 days we've had leadership communication for the top 500, and I think it was very appreciated. So the leadership could really share the most important update about how we're doing, what we're doing, address any concern, and share as well great stories and testimonies of how we're moving into that phase. I'm convinced that showing a lot of empathy and kindness in those moments is very important. Uh, Being able to recognize, it goes a long way. So I think all of that has a lot of importance because small things that get noticed, even more when you have 15,000 people working remotely, are important. And we've seen our recognition portal, you know, go very dynamic because people are really leveraging those tools that we are offering to them. Caring for your people, taking care of them is what makes the difference. And I do believe that's what will fuel the success of leaders when they continue to do so in the post-crisis environment. Yeah, that's such a great point. And leaders really have shined during this very difficult yeah. time. There's something I was reflecting on, which is sometimes the crisis forces organization to really transform but for the better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing that I've seen when I look back into some of the measures that we've uh, implemented, such as really embracing flexibility at work and offering volunteering part-time working arrangements, this is something that, you know, before the crisis, I think was a a concept that was not foreign to leadership, but not something that was particularly popular. But if you look at how we've been leveraging it right now and how we plan on making it sustainable for the future, that's typically something that I believe is a win because we want to be able to offer solutions to our workforce to manage their unique life and work. And part-time is one of the arrangements that can, you know, make sense for you. Our leaders now have seen the, the value that working part-time doesn't mean you work less. Those are key transformations that I believe will stay, and I'm very optimistic for that. Until next time, listeners, I'm Debbie Bola. Bola.